Noam, <laughs> maybe you could just say a little bit about what, what D the DeLillo novel means to you and, and what, you, what exactly you meant when you called it easily filmable. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I, I, this is a book, I would say, this is a book that I read when I was a teenager, which only, and, and I was a teenager only a few years after it came out in the 80s, and um, uh, it was a book my father gave me and, and recommended, which meant a lot to me. Um, and uh, it's, I, it stayed with me up through all these years, and then, but you know, it gets fainter and fainter, and you have little images and things you're not things you're not sure even are in the book anymore, but things that you kind of associate with the book. And then I reread it um, just really on a lark, right at the end of the end of 2019 into the beginning of 2020, which also obviously coincided with the beginning of the pandemic. And it was I it was also a point in my career where I had finished Marriage Story and I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I. Uh, I, it was the first time I haven't known what I wanted to do next, and I sort of saw what was, what, what I saw in the book felt very much to me how I, a representation of how I was feeling, and um, uh, not just because of the pandemic, but just the sort of living in the world. And uh, I thought, well, why don't I try this? <laughs> <laughs> We have a few more minutes, and we have a lot of people on stage, so maybe we should get them to speak. They're all staring uh, at us. Speak. <laughs> um, Adam and Greta. <laughs> there's a mic over there. Um, there's, a mi there's a microphone. There's also a microphone on the on the. <laughs> Thank you, Danny Elfman. Oh, no, no, um, as Noah said, you've both worked with him many times. Um, I'm wondering if you can just say a little bit about this particular film and and not give away too much for the people who haven't seen it. I think people would like if you did the scene from Francis Hard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dance. Um, well, I, I, you know, as I, I do get to live with Noah, so I, um, <laughs> um, I was lucky enough to be part of it. Really, in, in terms of just even knowing that this was something he was thinking about really early, and I had also read the book when I was in my late teens. I was like 19 when I read it, and thought it was hilarious and dog-eared every page. And then um, he said, "Can you read it again?" And uh, and I and I did. And then he started showing me pages he was writing, and I was instantly filled with jealous rage because it was so good. And then he said, who should be Babette? And I said, me. And he agreed. Um, and uh, and I, I, but I, I really, um, it, it was just something instantly that felt very alive and very of, of this moment and of sort of it feels like every moment in this strange, wonderful modern world we sort of have to construct our lives in. And um, it was a joy to work on it and to get to uh, I work with Adam again was very exciting. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a treat that we got to, to work on this material. That's a good answer. I sent you the book too, right? You, you, you sent me a book. I read it. I read the book, and then uh, read what you wrote. Well, partly as I was assessing out, like what, like if you guys want to do it, then maybe that feels like even more of a reason to do it. <laughs> which is true. Yeah. 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 Which we did. Which, which you did. <laughs> I, this one didn't actually didn't feel different uh, in how we worked on it, but in scale, obviously, it was bigger. So that I, I would say that it felt. Uh, the same. We still had a lot of rehearsal beforehand, which was helpful. It, it, it still felt kind of like we were making a theater piece, even though it was on film, because we rehearsed it uh, almost the same way that you would do a play. But and then in uh, shooting it, it takes the kind of the run of a whole theatrical run and compresses it to a day, because we do a, a lot of takes and a lot of setups and are relentless in that. So in a way, it was the same. It just was a bigger scale. Should we pass the mic down yeah. the room? Uh, Rafi, Sam, and May, maybe you want to talk about your experience on the set and uh, just creating a, a family unit. 
Um, we, we don't want to give too much away, but yeah. <laughs> right. It, uh, I I don't know. I mean, there were, we we had all this rehearsal time, which was incredible, as as they said, and and um, I don't know. Like we we were pretty much living with each other for a couple months before we even started shooting, which was incredible. And and I don't know. We just Noah just created an environment that made it really easy to kind of gel like that. But I don't know. What, Touche. All right. It felt very cool to like also be able to like step into like go from like living in this world where you have to wear like masks and like weird shields and stuff like that to sort of like going from that to immediately be stepping on to like like a portal to the 80s is like really really like fascinating and very very <laughs> surreal <laughs> but it was really really cool to be able to do that and you just got to see everything in the sets and it was really, really crazy and it was really fun. <laughs> Agreed. Say something. No, I have <laughs> No, with Don, Don, Don Cheadle plays. Okay, um, I, it's just Don plays many people's favorite character in the novel, Murray. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, as everyone has said uh, before me, the rehearsal process did feel very, uh, like it was a very theatrical process, and it made me long for that in other films. You don't often get that, uh, that kind of time, that kind of exploration um, to dig into. There's a scene that you will see that Adam and I, really specific kind of choreography that happens. Um, it was very different than anything I'd ever shot. And I felt like you know, we really collaboratively figured out a way to make that all feel very real and natural and still fun and, not, and, and unnatural at the same time. So I think that that's something that was, for me, a very unique experience that felt very much like doing a play. Um, but again, having the opportunity to create this world you know, that felt it, well, my character specifically feels like he's in it but not of it and sort of presides over it and kind of dips in when he wants and then steps back and, you know, comments about it. Um, she, she guys are going to be fascinated by this. Um, <laughs> but uh, it just was a very, um, a, a very different and, and, and uh, a rewarding um, experience that you don't often have in, in filmmaking that I haven't often had in my career. Jody or Lars? Point really passing it down the line. Yes, I mean, I, my actual filming experience was that of Don's character, where it's like I got to be in it, but not really of it. And, you know, Winnie kind of always is sort of a little bit of an outsider, but, but, but is in it as well. And, and just in the filming of it all, it was really magical to get to sort of like pop in to what... I knew was something very epic and very interesting and very funny and very strange and get to play a character that felt strange as well, which I don't often get to do. And um, it's always really exciting when I get that opportunity. So thank you for that. But yeah, it was just, for me, it was just really super fun because I just got to pop in and out and <laughs> get to be a part of this thing that was really special and, and very weird, which I loved about it the most. <laughs> Yeah, um, I just want to share one thing because I'm from Germany. Um, my name is Lars Eidinger. And um, it just came to my mind when I got the, co the call from my agent and she said, uh, you have to do a self-tape for a Noah Baumbach movie. And the only reason was, as far as I uh, know, that Greta saw me playing Hamlet in Berlin in the theater and some of Noah's friends saw me playing Richard III in BAM and then I'm, I was doing the, the self-tape, um, the, the scene that you are going to see uh, in the movie uh, on the floor of our bathroom because <laughs> I, I wanted to be not disturbed by my family. So I went to the bathroom sitting on the 
uh, floor and <laughs> recorded myself and then I there was such a weird moment to say okay this is it and now I'm sending it to Noah and um, <laughs> hopefully he will like it I'm <laughs> And then, yeah, a week later, I got the call, and the, he, he was sitting in his apartment in Manhattan in, in front of a fireplace and said, yeah, okay, um, <laughs> let's do the movie together. Um, and now I'm standing here, and uh, Noah said it in the beginning for him, it's like a dream come true um, to be the opening film of the New York Film Festival. For me, this is really a dream come true. Yeah. We made music. Thank you very much. And I produce. All right. Um, have a great screening, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy the movie. Thank you.